uh, hanging with Alan's friends yesterday night. And they were super hyped for this. Actually, yeah. this set, they were like giving the best um, bets for him. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, this will be something interesting to see. We have uh, the Aegis and, of course, the Snake. Of course, we know MKLeo has a variety of characters he can pull out for his bracket, but he's going with the Aegis, as you mentioned, coming straight into Pokemon Stadium 2. And already the pressure from MKLeo not giving any time or any distance for LNDs to use those projectiles and those grenades to start making things uncomfortable for him. Yes, exactly. We saw a couple of grenades uh, hitting on Leo, but it's not enough yet. Well, but it seems like Alandis is getting comfortable in the center of the stage. Uh, we know that he takes a lot of advantages um, of the platforms. So let's see how this um, gets in the, in the next moment. Yeah, and Kaleo finally finding another way to go in with that Nair, now pressuring Changing to Pirate, trying to find the stock as soon as possible. But of course, Alan Diz will already know that he's one of those Snake players that has a variety of mix-ups when coming back to the stage, so he makes it back safely, but still under the pressure of MKLeo. Yes, I know, and also, he's, uh, Alan Diz is pretty patient sometimes yes. when he knows that he has the um, ability to confirm Ooh. something just like this with this uh, aerial that he just showed us. Oh, but there we go, MKLeo responding just as fast. Both yeah. of them with their respective offers finding the first stock after the first minute of the match, but right again, MKLeo with the pressure not giving Alan this that distance that he really requires if he wants to set up any projectiles to start his attacks. Yes, exactly. I think it's been, oh my god, so far uh, an even matchup. Yes. At uh, this point, but that is going to take the second stop, uh, stock of Alan and uh, Leo, of course, has of course has the advantage at this point. Yeah, very unfortunate for Alan. This having his cipher broken by MK Leo, but there we go. He's yeah. just pulled through with an amazing lead so far. Pretty much a full stock right here. But Alan is putting on the pressure right now, starting to put a wall of projectiles on the left to make it impossible for MK Leo. Who anyways, finds a way to come back onto the stage, but that pressure continues with that dash attack and these aerials. It is amazing to see uh, how much of a confidence. Um, it's shown by a player like Alan Dis when he comes uh, to the character that he's using. Because we saw Leo for a couple of seconds having a big advantage and now he's almost getting a confirm, but he has to be careful with this kind of interaction. Absolutely, coming under the pressure again from NK Leo, who's trying to finish the set as, fa as soon as possible. Not switching to Pyra just yet, trying to do more damage, but Mithra doing still wonders already, 93% on Alan Dis. The switch to Pyra comes right now and the pressure Trying to bait, trying to get this this aerial, trying to fish for them. Cannot find him just yet, but Alan Dees can't punish that either. Not yet, but now it's going to be his turn to do, to put the things even again when it comes to the stocks. But he has to work a little bit on the percentages because that is always uh, dangerous for for the opponent of Leo. Absolutely, very scary situation there with MKLeo under the platform putting the pressure with that up smash, not, not taking the stock just yet with Mithra, but it's still trying to deal damage because we know for a fact Snake is a very heavy character, but the pressure here, uh, Island is his own grenade, pretty much setting him up for an aerial for a net guard from MKLeo who takes the game one yes. without much issue, honestly. Yes, yes, it was amazing to see. Um, as soon as he took the second stock, yeah. the things started to go on his side. Mm -hmm. But I think Alan was uh, adapting pretty pretty well at the end of the matchup. And well, let's see what happens in the next one. Yeah, I mean, we saw for a fact on the very first stock, Alan is surprising MK player <laughs> with that up here. Yeah. Because he usually is one of those snake players that likes recovering high. Mm -hmm. But that also means that it's very easy for his opponents to yes. find, I guess, where he's going to be landing at. But he switched things around without offer surprising Leo, but still Leo keeping calm, bringing the game back and winning it with a very, I mean, very dominant yes. game one, I would yes, say. Yes, exactly. I, I, I feel the same way. But well, now we are going to final destination. Pretty interesting. Let's see what happens in this one. Yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting because the lack of platforms is going to change things around, which means there's a lot of space. It's pretty much a playground for all of Alan Dis's projectiles because we know for a fact that he likes those platforms at all, but I mean, Final Destination just seems like the perfect place for a snake mate. Yes, exactly. But well, we have uh, Swell, the Aegis again, and we have still some of um, even percentages, but Leo is working on this edge guard right now. And there we go, putting in the pressure, trying to fish for an aerial, maybe trying to force Alan this to make a mistake, gets the grab here, let's see if he can follow it up. Nope, cannot connect with that dash attack just yet, but 
LMD is once again taking his distance because he knows he's got to play very patient, very safe at this point because he's pretty much at losing his stock percentage. Yes, almost, and Alan is going up, but he has to be careful when going back to the stage. Now they are positioned in the almost center, but oh my god, Alan is in a risky position right now. Yeah, there we go. Good PI from LMD is not risking himself, going too high for MKLeo to find it. But Ooh. once again, MKLeo not scared at all to go off stage to get that first stock off of LMD. So he's got to work quick because he doesn't want to let Leo go without taking this stock as soon as possible. Yes, we don't want any disadvantages when going against Leo. And I mean, we're in top Ooh, 32, almost making that work out for Alan, but it's not the occasion by now. The jabs are working perfectly for Leo as well. And as well as you just said before, um, the landing is sometimes a little bit of a vulnerable position for Alan. But now, it's almost, it has almost worked, but I mean, this, this comeback to the stage of Leo was just perfect. That's gonna be sad for Alan this, because he knew exactly where MK Leo was gonna be, but unfortunately he cannot connect. But right here, the pressure from the Nikita, Ooh. once again for a second time, we thought he would have been safe, but the Nikita does land, take the first stock, and Alan this still with a 73% disadvantage, but he can bring things back really quick right here, starting with a little bit of string from that grenade explosion to the backer, not continuing, not extending that string anymore, but Careful, because MK Leo is using Alan Dizzy's own projectiles against them. Yes, I know. And Leo is looking like a shark just waiting for him to land uh, anywhere. And well, they are just uh, having a little bit of a trade of percentages. Leo taking the advantage in the stage, waiting for Alan patiently, as we know. And now positioning. Oh my god. This is yeah. Yeah, it was a little bit risky for Alan, but now it's another disadvantage for him. Yeah, being at the ledge is definitely going to be a difficult situation for Alan Dees, and MKLeo capitalizes perfectly with that punish with the backer, finds the second stock, but Alan Dees putting in the pressure once again in the ledge. We've seen this happen before, but once again, Leo has no trouble coming back into the stage aggressively, and now trying to send this string Woo! gets the up to deal some extra damage, which is coming up great, because once again, MKLeo looking like he's finding a full stock advantage like we saw in game one. Yes, exactly. He is adding just any percentages that he can, and he knows that Alan is going to move somewhere that he can get him, just like this with this grab. Yeah, and once again, pretty much a repeat of last game, but this time on the opposite side of the stage. Leo takes game two with an even bigger, an even bigger lead, actually, with a two star. Yes, exactly. Well, this is um, this is looking a little bit difficult for Alan, but if he adapts for the next match. You know, it always can come back to the um, score. Absolutely. It's definitely not going to be an easy task, though. MK Leo, as far as I know, hasn't dropped a single game yet in bracket today. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, he's on a mission to get all the way to Grants with a perfect run. But of course, Alan Dees, it's game three. A, a, a best of five set definitely gives you a good chance to, yes, exactly. to get to know your opponent and adapt. But. Adapting against MK Leo is kind of a bit of a hard task. Yes, you know, it's like uh, as soon as you're uh, trying to adapt to, to him or to his playstyle, he's already doing the same thing. So it's quite difficult for for almost any player. Exactly. There's a reason why he is the number one player in the world. But Alan is of course, one of the best players in D1 and trying to show up for his region. Right again, landing that uh, that C4, the explosion, cannot get the confirm yet to almost take the stock, but he had, he had a good advantage at the start of the game. But once again, MKLeo using Mithra perfectly, getting those little confirms, those strings of aerial attacks. And once again, finding himself almost tying this game and even taking Ooh. it to his side with that back here. Now Alan Dees is taking over with some of a higher percentage, but we know that Leo is just chasing him around the stage. He has to be careful. It's always, um, there's always a point when Alan is doing his setups with the, with the projectiles, but Leo uh, always goes to him or gets super close, so it gets difficult. But now he's just confirming another stock in his favor, so this could be a good opportunity for Alan. Yeah, there was a pretty smart decision by MK Leo trying to use that platform to mix up his recovery, but Alan is ready to cover that with Denikita. And once again, it's first time Alan is actually on the lead on this set, trying to get a good advantage, maybe doing some damage before potentially losing this stock here with all the pressure and now with the platform leaving. But of course, Alan is once again recovering, coming back into the stage from up far. But he really just keeps the pressure coming and that back, back here is not going to be enough to take this stock just yet. Yes, it's not going to be enough yet. A nice comeback to the stage. I was expecting something to happen, 
But I think um, Alan is waiting pretty, pretty well with the shield and not risking too much. But now it's going to be the time when he loses another stuff. Of course, the dash attack and the Q to switch to Mithra to once again try to find those openings, those strings of aerials to deal the damage. Because MKLeo really isn't there that far at all. So a single mistake from Alan, this could go Ooh. all the way for him. But him, of course, also trying to extend his lead right here with the explosions, trying to be patient, playing very safe, honestly. But yes. MKLeo, of course, being incredibly patient, not getting desperate at all. Yes, as you just said, he has the lead of percentage at this point, but that is the type of moments when uh, we know Leo can have just one interaction and put just you like in that. a super vulnerable position for a couple of moments. So we see Alan is struggling a little bit to land on the stage, and MK Leo is not going to let that happen. Once again, using Pyrus up there to bring that back, and using, of course, waiting on that throw to not get hit by the up smash. Very smart by MK Leo. Now putting. Alandis once again against the ropes, very close to the ledge, but Alandis finds a way to come back, gets the jab here, does not take the stock yet, but once again the pressure from that projectiles cannot land that up smash just yet, and MKLeo starts once again one of the combos, but this could be it. Yep. Nice, what a nice setup. We know that this is a um, usual thing to happen against Alandis. Now we're going back to even uh, stocks at this point. We know Alan has a higher percentage of damage and it's looking a little bit difficult for him, but he's going to leave the set with this bike. Amazing set that we just had uh, for the first time on the day. Incredible awareness from Anki Leo and noticing yes. Alan is dropping uh, from that, from the ledge. And of course, no invincibility anymore. You get punished for that. And once again, what it looked like this was going to be the closest game so far. MK Leo says, nope. Yes. I want to get over with this already. It's just a situation that we were saying about Leo that he's always adapting as well. So it gets a little bit, uh, it's like a higher difficult difficulty, you know? Yeah, <laughs> sure. But right there, MKLeo continues his streak of not losing any single game so far in this tournament. So he moves on to the next round of top 32. Yes. While on this has a little bit of a long path if he wants to make it to top eight later today yes but i mean it's it's already a big deal to be in yeah. top 32 because we if you see the bracket it's uh, it's just stacked it, it has the most um strongest players i mean yeah. and from everywhere so it's it's pretty good for the experience at least absolutely reminder that this is mexico's first ever super major we have about 800 people that mm -hmm. came by on the weekend to compete and it shows the <laughs> talent that's left on top 32 well, if you made it here, congrats, but yes. I know there's a lot of people that have much higher expectations than just yes. reaching top 32. You know, some people were sad yesterday because yeah. they lost their sets or whatever, but I mean, it's just something that you should feel a little bit um, happier because it's just too, too heavy to compete. Yeah, at I this mean, point. you definitely have to understand the situation where you are, I mean. You can come to a tournament, uh, maybe your first tournament for a lot of people and say, oh, I'm going to be the best, I'm going to beat everyone. But you have to be realistic sometimes with the expectations because <laughs> then you're going to get disappointed and I mean, yes. you have to make the best out of the yes, weekend. I think it's like the vibes are so good yeah. that it's just like for a while and after that you just can have fun here. Yeah. It's Everybody is so happy here. I so. think there's definitely a relief after getting eliminated from bracket like no, okay we can chill it's over now i can have fun exactly yes and we know that this is a tournament super special to some players